हेलो नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू दिस स्पेशल एपिसोड ऑफ रियर विंडो आई होप आई एम बीइंग हर्ड बिकॉज़ आई एम डूइंग अ लाइव सेशन आफ्टर अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम एंड दिस टाइम आई एम नॉट यूजिंग माय स्टूडियो सेटअप आई एम यूजिंग द कैमरा एंड द माइक्रोफोन व्हिच इज इनबिल्ट इन द कैमरा सो आई होप आई एम बीइंग हर्ड सो all started with this uh, one of the most beautiful things i have seen on the internet in the past week and that is the recreation of the song rimjim gire savan from the film manzil by basu chatterjee featuring uh, amitabh bachchan and moushumi chatterjee the film has songs by r d barman the great rd barman and uh, the songs are written by yogesh and yogesh and rd barman are a very rare combination if they have the other film that i remember is mazak where they have uh, collaborated together and there must be another two or three films uh, where they have collaborated together but uh, it's a rare and uh, in my opinion a great combination of rd barman and yogesh god lyricist that i very much like the thing with yogesh or indivar was that uh, they never used urdu words if they could use hindi words there so they did not use dil if they could use man at that time and uh, that's why it provided a very different sort of uh, flavor to the language when most of the lyrics in uh, the hindi film industry were urduized in a sense because a lot of shayars had come uh, so janisar akhtar was there sahir ludhianvi was there majru sultan puri was there and uh, shakil badayuni was there so there was a lot of urduization there there, there was a glamour also for urdu but uh, these few lyricists uh, like shailendra in many cases uh, indivar and uh, yogesh they wrote lyrics which were very hindiized in a way and classical hindi language they used for their lyrics it it was quite refreshing in a way because you keep on listening to the same urdu words again and again and then suddenly you find uh, these people using different uh, language altogether so this song uh, rimjim gire savan was recreated by uh, i wouldn't call them a very young at heart couple shailesh and vandana enamdar and it was directed by anup ringan gaukar and ankita ringan gaukar that is what i read in the credits if you haven't watched this recreation uh, although i'll wager that you have already watched it if not do watch it it's one of the most beautiful things to hit the internet in the recent uh, times and especially if you have been uh, listening to all the uh, news of political turmoil then this is the song to get you rejuvenated uh so what happened was uh, this video went viral and there was a lot of discussion uh, again on uh, rd barman and the songs uh, by him and especially this song because it's a song that comes twice in the film and it's it has two versions the first version sung by kishor kumar and the second version which is sung by lata mangeshkar so in one of the rd fan groups uh, there was a suggestion by uh, the twitter user cool funny t-shirt i hope he is listening to this so he said that this double version there are many double version songs but this song should be analyzed for its difference and uh, the way rd barman has envisaged the song so i took it upon myself and volunteered and i thought i would keep my views on this song 
in all humility i must say that this is not the final word on the song it's just my take my observations and uh, how as a music director i look at it through my rear window so uh, there are a lot of double version songs which have come before and which will keep on coming after now some of the double version songs uh, songs which have two versions in the film are uh, mostly you'll have a happy version and then a sad version like the song ye dosti hum nahi chhodenge they have this happy version and then they have a sad version in the end of the song so this is a very common practice used by filmmakers for as a device of storytelling that the same song comes as a recall and uh, it might have the same words but the tune is a little goes to uh, it's a little more uh, inward looking it is more uh, contemplative and sometimes it is also laced with pathos so it will like ye dosti hum nahi chhodenge if this is a piece of the original song then the sad song will come as ye dosti hum nahi chhodenge the natural way to bring anything from happy to sad is to decrease the pace so you have to understand this that because in sadness we become more contemplative we become more inward looking we become more introspective and uh, while happy songs are more celebratory in nature so the pace increases because there is an adrenaline rush okay now keep this in mind because we are going to talk about this song as well there are some songs which have the same tune maybe even the same pace but they have different wordings for example mm, now this doesn't have the same pace necessarily but the pace is a little different but uh, the pace again here because it's a it's in a more contemplative situation the pace of the other song is a little sad but abhi na jao chhod kar के दिल भी भरा नहीं अजय देव सॉन्ग एंड वेन इट कम्स अगेन जहा में कौन है के जिस को गम मिला नहीं सो द पेस इज मोर और लेस सिमिलर बट द सेकेंड सॉन्ग इज मोर कंटेम्परेटिव एंड द लिरिक्स हैव टोटली चेंज दिस वन एज अ जय देव सॉन्ग रिटर्न बाय साहिर लुधियानवी then we have songs which there are male and female versions but not necessarily there is any change in orchestration or maybe any change in uh, even the pace of the song or even the mood of the song for example uh, you you'll have eh san tera hoga mujh par dil chahta hai wo kehne do mujhe तुमसे मोहब्बत हो गई है मुझे पलकों की छाओ में रहने दो सो दिस शंकर जय किशन सॉन्ग फ्रॉम जंगली हैज बीन संग बाय मोहम्मद रफी एज वेल एज लता मंगेशकर देर इज नो पर्टिकुलर डिफरेंस इन द मूड ऑफ द सॉन्ग इट्स मोर और लेस द सेम द वर्डिंग्स आर आल्सो मोर और लेस द सेम विल बी देन देर आर some other songs which actually they change from uh, in the mood also and the wordings also but the signature line is kept the same this is the type of song we are going to talk about rimjin gire sawan this song is from the film manzil and uh, Amitabh Bachchan, Moshmi Chatterjee, A.K. Hangal. If you haven't watched the film, do watch the film. It's it's a very good film, and one of Amitabh Bachchan's earlier films where the storyline used to be the hero, and not 
Amitabh Bachchan, not as Amitabh Bachchan, but Amitabh Bachchan as the character. So this song comes twice in the film. The first version sung by Kishor Kumar. The second version sung by Lata Mangeshkar. Now the first version, it's important to know where the first uh, version comes in. Okay. The first version comes right in the beginning of the film. Uh, where uh, you have the heroine, that is Maushami Chatterjee, uh, walking towards a house. I think she first takes a bus and then I don't quite remember. It's been a lot of years since I saw the film. But she feels that she is being followed by a man, which is Amitabh Bachchan. And she feels that he is some rowdy who is chasing her. And she tries to quicken her pace. She gets out of the bus and he gets out in the same place. Uh, she starts walking in a particular direction. This man walking starts in the particular direction. And she keeps feeling that he is actually chasing her and uh, you, he has no good intentions about it. Now, at one point, he just overtakes her and goes somewhere. Later, she finds out that he has come as a guest to the same household where she has been invited and it's for some engagement or wedding party and uh, there is a small function there where friends are you know casually taking up a harmonium and our hero who's a supposed to be a good singer amitabh bachchan he he is asked to sing a song and there for the first time he sings this song now this song comes at a time where uh, he's been asked to sing the song and it's shot in an interior location so he is actually singing the song. There is lip sync. Uh, and not just lip sync. It's like, it's a very natural situation where if somebody is asked to sing a song, what would that person do? Take up a harmonium or a guitar and then sing it out. Okay. And people are listening to it. They will appreciate. Now, because this song is, this we have to uh, realize two things here. First thing is in which situation the song comes. Secondly, where has it been shot? And third, in which, where in the story does the song fit? So there are three things in this. This song has been shot in a house, which is interior. So although... The lyrics say Rimjim Gere Savan. There is no rain in the song. In the first version. There is no rain. It's not raining outside as well. It's just a song that he's singing. And uh, it's a lip sync song. So we have to understand how directors make use of lip sync songs and songs which are in the background. So, which are not played. So, I have observed that a lip sync song is something that is the position of the character itself. So, the song has to be written in such a way that it's the character singing, not the, it's not a poet singing necessarily. For example, in Amar Akbar Anthony, for example, if you know, and if it's a lip sync song, then Anthony will have to sing. Uh, My name is Anthony Gonzalez. So this is the tenor of the lyric that will be there. It will be the tenor of that song because it goes with the character. You can't have Anthony Gonzalez singing. Kabhi khud pe, kabhi halat pe, rona aya, kabhi khud pe. You can't have him do that because it will be a mismatch. If this song has to be used, if kabhi khud pe, kabhi halat pe, rona aya has to be used for Anthony, then it will have to be in the background. 
because it's a directorial comment. So the lip sync song is used as a position of the character while the background song is used mostly as a directorial comment or something that is the feeling of the character but is not extrovertly put out. So these are the two uh, situations where you actually have a background song and not a lip sync song. Now here the situation is different because he's been asked to sing a song. So it's not necessarily the position of the hero that he's singing because you can sing any song in a mehfil or in a show. It does not necessarily have to be your song. Here the situation and what the position of the character is matching but even though he's singing so he's singing this, but there is no rain and uh, there is no real scope for Sulag Sulag Jayaman also because the hero and heroine have not even been introduced. But there is a potential here. So now, keeping the Mukhra the same, Yogesh further writes... Jab Bajiti hai boonde ar mahamare pal ke na moonde Kaise dekhe sapne nain sunag sunag jaye man Bhige aaj is mausam mein lagi kaisi ye agan now, this is the first antara of this song, of this version. Notice the pace of the song is relaxed because the situation does not demand, it's not a discotheque that they are singing. There is, there is no excitement as such. Everybody is relaxed. Everybody is happy. Everybody is calm. The uh, hero has a harmonium in his hand. Although the there is no sound of the harmonium in the song. But R.D. Burman is ex he is a he is extremely good at understanding the drama, the theater behind the song or the storytelling. So what R.D. Burman must have got as a brief from the director is that this song is being sung by a hero in a, a gathering of friends. So if you notice the orchestration of this song, R.D. Burman does not use a big orchestra. Mostly the instruments that are in the forefront are solo instruments. There is a tabla playing, maybe a pair of tablas, but this pair of tablas is also played only just to enhance the sound a bit. But essentially, it gives a feeling of a solo tabla. Then there is a solo sitar playing, uh, most probably uh, the great uh, Arvind Maikar must have played the sitar. Uh, it's my guess uh, that uh, in this film. So, if you see that there is a solo satar and a tabla which is playing, the strings or the violin, viola, the string section, it's playing but it's at the background. It's, it's never in the forefront in this version of the song. In this version of the song, it's at the background. Uh, it's, it's like an, what they call an obligato. So, it's just used as a harmony not the main melody. The main melody is not on any sort of a grand uh, scale. It's so that you get a feeling of the 
compressed space also because you are using solo instruments also when you shoot uh, anything in the interior you don't have any scope for long shots when you have scope for long shots you can use a bigger orchestra when you use mid shots as i am speaking to you right now or close up if i come this then there is more chance to use solo instruments because a close up actually restrains the frame so there is you don't have too much information on the screen you have a nuanced say uh, nuanced facial expressions there is scope for nuanced facial expression so it is you say what there, there is a word in marathi sukshma it's a very tiny micro uh, expression so there is a scope for nuanced micro expression which cannot be uh, expressed with a large orchestra it has to be expressed in a solo instrument which is what rd barman understands so you you see in this version where it's shot in an interior space he uses solo instruments a tabla mostly indian instruments the rhythm is also indian it's a, a regular indian rhythm uh, played on the tabla there are there is a madal in the beginning the madal was a nepali instrument which was actually uh, uh, i think sd barman did use it but the way rd barman has used the madal i don't think any other music composer in the uh, indian film industry has used it so you can see and it's his favorite instrument so he uses the madal in many songs especially where there is indian rhythm so the madal can be used mostly in an indian rhythm very signature rd barman rhythm in this song so the madal the tabla the uh, sitar in most cases the obligato of string section is in the background the second verse is <laughs> now this verse as written by yogesh ji brings us to the situation that the hero and heroine find themselves in they have just met there is nothing has happened between them yet but there is a very potent situation here where they they have looked at each other and especially she she is looking at him and she realizes her mistake that she thought of him as a rowdy but he is actually a guest who is invited and seems like a decent person now this situation actually was borrowed from uh, an actual real life situation featuring lata mangeshkar and kishor kumar that is how lata ji first met kishor da uh, i think uh, both were going to filbistan studios in gorega uh they were in the same train lata ji got down at gorega and so did this man after her and as she started walking towards uh, the gate of the station this man also started walking she turned right at the station or left i don't remember i think it's right but she turned right as she came out of the station this man also turned right and she got the feeling that he is chasing her she sat in a uh, uh, in a tonga i think and he sat in the same tonga she turned into the gate of filmistan studio this man turned into the same gate and she was extremely sure by now that this is a rowdy who is following her so she complained to the director to the music director i don't remember who he was but he identified him as this man as kishor kumar and that's how lata ji and kishor kumar first met this this anecdote has been told by both kishor da and lata ji in different uh, situations and at different times but this same thing was replicated by basu chatterjee in this film the same situation 
so when moshubi chatterjee realizes that amitabh bachchan does not have any uh, harmful intention or so she realizes her uh, mistake and uh, not a mistake uh, her misgiving and then uh, she smiles and here a potential is created where this which is not even an acquaintance as yet but it has a potential to be a full fledged romance yes uh, vasu ji has uh, told me that it's kemchan prakash ji thank you vasu ji thank you so uh, now this next antara if you see has nothing to do with the reins it has to do with something these two characters find uh, themselves in the situation that they are in which is महफिल में महफिल में कैसे कह दे किसी से दिल बंध रहा है किस अजनबी से महफिल में कैसे कह दे किसी से दिल बंध रहा है किसी अजनबी से हाय करे अब क्या जतन सुलग सुलग जाए मन भीगे आज इस मौसम में लगी कैसी है सावन so until this sulag sulag jayaman comes in the second antara you don't have any reference to the rain again so this is a completely different situation now even if there is a possibility of a relationship flowering between the hero and the heroine you see that everything is unsaid mehfil mein kaise keh de kisi se dil bandh raha hai kisi ajnabi se who is the protagonist talking to it's actually himself so the whole song itself is very introvert it's like talking to oneself it's not talking to outside except for the first uh, till the first verse this second verse is totally introvert okay so uh, yeah exactly so shri nival ji says that these lines specify that it's sung in a mehfil so and that is the situation that there is that is there in the film that uh, there is a mehfil actually uh, he is singing he is finding the heroine attractive and he doesn't know how to communicate in the crowd so mehfil mein kaise keh de kisi se dil bandh raha hai किसी अजनबी से सो so, बंधा हुआ नहीं है बंध गया नहीं है इट्स प्रेजेंट प्रोग्रेसिव टेंस चल रहा है दिल बंध रहा है किसी अजनबी से सो दिस इज द नाउ मोमेंट ओके हाय करे अब क्या जतन हाउ डू आई एक्सप्रेस माय सेल्फ ओके सो दिस इज अ सिचुएशन दैट इज देयर इन द प्रेजेंट टेंस बट यू सी द होल फीलिंग there is it's only platonic in the sense that there is no sensual feeling here it's something dreamy it's something uh, in the air and it's very sort of non sensual here it's very simple it's very pure sort of there is no uh, hint also at any kind of sensuality and that is another reason why rd barman has kept the pace of this song relaxed now we'll move to the other version of this song the other version comes in the movie when they this couple is very much in love with each other okay this version if you see uh, on youtube uh, i think i'll give the links to both these versions later on in the description box 
But if you see this version, you will find that it's been shot across Mumbai. And uh, one thing that Basu Chatterjee did in his films was present this city, Mumbai, as a character in his films. You know, it it becomes it becomes a character in the films. Rarely uh, do filmmakers make the cities or the places in their stories as one of the characters. I always uh, for it. I always like Shekhar Kapoor's Masoom, where Delhi is a character in the film. There are many uh, such uh, even Chashme Baddur, where Delhi is a character in that. Uh, story. That is what Basu Chatterjee did. If you see even Bato Bato Me, you will see that Mumbai locals, Mumbai life has been extremely well uh, caught on uh, camera and the city, that place becomes a character in the story. Similarly, uh, this song, uh, Rimjim Gire Savan, the Lata Mangeshkar version, now, it has been shot on live locales in Mumbai during the rains. During the torrential rains of Mumbai. It's a typical Mumbai rain. And uh, life doesn't stop in Mumbai. One day, sometimes in every monsoon, Mumbai comes to a halt because of these rains. But Otherwise, whatever the situation, life in Mumbai does not stop. So there is a pace of that city. Okay, Here are two characters, young people in love. Okay, So uh, on you will find the uh, cross maidan uh, opposite uh, the university and the high court. You will find marine drive you will find uh, the high court building is also seen you across the locales of mumbai where uh, this uh, oval maidan yes and uh, in the fort area the actual the real mumbai if you see uh, shailesh and vandana inamdar have taken all the pains to go to the similar locations and uh, shoot it so let me on behalf of all of us, really commend that effort that uh, they took it upon themselves and they recreated the song so beautifully. Now, speaking of the original song in the film, here you see a young couple moving across Mumbai without even bothering to, you know, take an umbrella. They are so much in love. They are so much at one with nature that they don't really care about anything else. So that, you know, those who are involved so much in themselves that they they are totally blissfully unaware of, you know, what is happening around them. And they are absorbed in one another. And how does Basu Chatterjee tell the story? He shows them in the rain without carrying even semblance of an umbrella. They are not bothered. They just want to get wet in the... They are living the moment. This is a major difference between the earlier version and this song. So see the earlier version when Amitabh Bachchan is singing... He is singing about the rain, but the rain is not there at that time. So, when you are either singing out of memory or you are imagining something, the pace of that imagination or pace of the memory of nostalgia is always lesser space than what the pace of this moment is. And so, what does R.D. Burman do? From... Rim jim gire saban Sulag sulag jaye man Bhige aaj is mausam 
let's take the original rim jhim gire saavan this is the face of the kishor kumar song rim jhim gire saavan sunag sunag jaaye man bhige aaj is mausam mein lagi kaisi ye agan and the lata mangeshkar version goes to rim jhim gire saavan sunag sunag jaaye man bhige aaj is mausam mein lagi kaisi ye agan rim jhim gire saavan the pace of the song increases getting this song from nostalgia or imagination to the present moment now this is happening now and uh, so vasu ji uh, gave me the word that i was looking for they are oblivious of their surroundings and what happens that when they are living in that moment the at, there is an adrenaline rush the youth the romance of that moment and so that pace denotes that romance now here rd barman changes the storytelling line because he has to show this adrenaline rush he falls back to the western instrumentation uh, the western orchestration so now he is there is no tabla no madal no sitar he is using the english flute manohari da has played the english flute uh, he is using uh, a western rhythm he is using the spanish guitar and he is using strings at the forefront now you will see the uh, main difference between this how the position of the strings has changed from the obligato to the forefront now this is the moment where he you want to give that adrenaline rush bring the strings into the forefront the whole storytelling changes in this even the tune of the uh, uh antara is not exactly the same there is such a slight a minute difference that in the kishor kumar version sa pa sa the uh, antara starts from the sa no so, sorry the re mehfil me kaise now you see the me the glide that there is on kaise okay mehfil me kaise so kaise is there is a glide so which denotes a sort of a contemplative feeling it gives you because the note is not straight okay the it there is a glide in the lata mangeshkar version it does not start with re it starts with sa so everything is direct see the top sa instead of going directly into the sa you sort of beat round the bush and start it with re mehfil and then get the fourth song re sa but here it's not pehle bhi ho to there is no time for contemplation so direct hit the direct note of the sa pehle bhi ho to barse the badal pehle bhi ho to bhiga tha chal not na 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 there is no time for contemplation because if you are living in that moment then you are just living you are not thinking about uh, <laughs> i uh, saw uh, this uh, stand up comedy show by i don't remember the name but by somebody who uh, you know he says that abhi moment banate hain memories banate hain so you don't think of creating memories when you are actually living the moment they become memories later and uh, so you see in this version how 
लता जी हिट्स द नोट डायरेक्टली पहले भी तो बरसे थे बादल पहले भी तो भीगा था एंड यर वेर यू हैव टू क्रेडिट योगेश जी फॉर थिंकिंग सो वेल अबाउट वॉट द स्टोरी टेलिंग इन द सिचुएशन इज यर ही डज नॉट गेट इन टू एनी काइंड ऑफ प्लेटॉनिक और नॉन सेंचुअल फीलिंग पहले भी यू तो बरसे थे बादल पहले भी यू तो भीगा पहले भी यू तो भीगा था आंचल नाउ यू आर actually talking about the senses and it becomes sensual because you make an you allude to the achal it suddenly the whole thing changes from a very uh, intellectual exercise or uh, something which is on just a feeling level to something which is extremely sensual so it had happened that first there were rains earlier too there were uh, uh, even then you know i i had become wet but what is this feeling that which now this feeling is extremely physical not just mental so this is sensual and that is in the two uh, antaras that yogesh ji has written for this version you will find the whole emphasis shifting from just very platonic things to extremely sensual things so pehle bhi hu to barse the badal pehle bhi hu to bhiga tha chal and through the notes he makes it more sensual what does he do which is not there in the kishor kumar song na 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 this alap of lata ji followed this is followed by low uh, octave english flute by manarida it creates that feeling of sensuality okay here both the versions and you will find that this alap is not there na 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 so the sare re 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 dha 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 sa it makes the whole thing extremely sensual because you are using a combination of my major minor notes and the the poignant note is the komal dha dha sa replace it with any other note पहले भी तो बरसे थे बादल पहले भी तो भीगा था चल this becomes more poignant it becomes more sensual that one note now this is the brilliance of rd parman he knows exactly what will convey the story well the pancham won't do the madhyam won't do only that komal dha will do and he will use that i always say that any kind of art is a travel from possibilities to inevitability because when you start off there are many possibilities you can go either way but you take that art to a position of inevitability now this komal dha in this situation has no alternative you can't replace it with any other note because it won't give you na 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 this feeling won't be na 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 won't give you that feeling 
will give you the feeling of that sensuality and that's why there is no alternative to rd burman when it comes to telling story in a song the second verse same thing again it's not is bar is saavan because it's not a memory saavan there is no need for that glide now the moment is now so what happens is bar is saavan deh ka hua hai is bar is samosam beh ka hua hai again that brilliant use of that komal dha now look at the brilliance and sometimes these things happen they just fall into place that behka hua hai it's it's not in its usual discipline and he uses that komal dha he has used it before but when it comes with the words behka hua hai that komal dha attains a different meaning altogether because it shows that it's not in that because that's a note which is really out of place in that melody surprisingly melodiously out of place but it's there nobody would have thought of using the komal dha when he is using all other uh, uh, pure notes so is bar saavan deh ka hua लगी Here, you have such a beautiful line. I, I always feel it's often lost in that song, but the brilliance of Yogesh. This bar Savan dehka hua hai. This bar mausam behka hua hai, and he follows it, follows it up with the line, "Jaane pi ke chali kya pavan." It's such a beautiful. Uh, Light, uh, which actually, you know, is bar mausam behka hua hai. It's a brilliant line. So the following line has to be more brilliant, and th- that's where he says, "Jaane pi ke chali kya pawan." Now look at this. He, uh, it's sort of a rhetorical question here. Jaane pi ke chali kya pawan. You know that actually. the wind won't do another thing i think that pavan in hindi is uh, the gender is feminine this cannot be done in marathi for example where the gender of pavan is masculine but jane chal jane jane pike chali kya pavan when it comes in the feminine gender it it assumes a different uh, sort of texture to the meaning because the look at it that it's the 70s the pavan is a sort of an analogy for the heroine otherwise who is who walks a very straight path an upper middle class well behaved girl because she is intoxicated by this feeling of sensual love mausam behka hua hai sirf mausam nahi behka hua hai wo bhi behki hui hai to kyun jaane pi ke chali kya pavan kya aisa maine piya hai ye kaun sa ras hai ye kya nasha hai jo mujhko hua hai so pavan is just the sort of a uh, rupak or a uh, analogy for you know for the heroine herself and that feeling of crossing that line or just walking very fine on that 
line of you know not going there not going towards the sign of uh, side of immorality or something but just walking that fine line and that that feeling is there in the song that is also what the na 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 and coming back to you know the sa that everything to together is communicated by the mixture of the lyrics and the music and finally the pictureization when all three go well hand in hand then you really it it becomes an experience that you can all have without any generation loss i am sure that shailesh and vandana ji must have seen themselves in that position long before they thought of making that video and when they did it it was like why do people like it because everybody feels that it's like he is representing themselves they would love to do this people don't because they are caught up in the inhibitions shailesh ji and vandana ji did it along with anup ji and ankita ji so once again congratulations for the video and uh, they made us relive this such fantastic song uh, i hope uh, you all enjoyed uh, today's session of rear window and we'll keep continuing uh, talking about such songs what you could do is you could suggest to me about which songs you would like to hear and maybe i can you know give my take on that song once again in all humility this is what i have observed it's not the final word there might be people who think differently and the best thing about music is that there is there is no right or wrong it's uh, just uh, uh shridhan ji say sorry ah pk also mean uh, mean pia no no here it's jane pk chali kya pon pk chali what has it drunk because it qualifies the uh, word behka so so anyway thanks all of you for participating i uh, thank uh, all of you vasu ji shridhan ji uh shrinivas ji joy christy sir uh, and uh, all of you who joined this session uh, do share the video if you have liked what i have said uh, do press the like button so that uh, you know this it these things reach a lot of people because uh, if you don't press that like then the youtube algorithm doesn't activate itself so please do like please do share please do subscribe to this channel if you have liked i keep doing uh, these sessions uh, today's session i have done after a long time but uh, let's hope to meet again soon do give me your suggestions so that i am uh, sort of encouraged to uh, you know talk about songs uh, and let's meet up for a nice cup of hot steaming tea uh, in these rains once again we'll come out with some other rain songs as well so uh, thank you for joining i think i'll end this broadcast here see you again soon